I really feel that this word tonight is going to bless, bless every person that's listening. Again, if this is your first time calling in or tuning in to the Midnight Cry Prayer Call, we pray every Tuesday night and Thursday night at midnight Eastern Standard Time, 11 p.m. Central Standard Time. And if you have prayer requests that you want us to join with you in prayer about, please feel free to email your prayer request to mncprayercall at gmail.com. That's mncprayercall at gmail.com. If you're just tuning in, I want to invite you to keep me in prayer tonight. Um, my voice is hoarse, as you can hear, because I seem to be coming down with a cold or the flu or some kind of virus. But um, I really pray that God gives me the grace to share this word with you tonight um, and that he will touch my voice. So welcome, welcome, welcome to those that are just tuning in. So I've titled tonight's teaching, I've Given Up Everything. Now what? I've given up everything. Now what? And the title kind of came to me as I was reading from the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19, verse 27 through verse 30. Matthew chapter 19, verse 27 through verse 30. And I'm reading, I'm going to read the New King James Version. Then I'm going to read it in the Message Version. So Matthew chapter 19, verse 27 through 30. Then Peter answered and said to him, See, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? So Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. So I just read Matthew chapter 19, 27 through 30 in the New King James Version. I want to read that same passage in the message version. Then Peter chimed in. We left everything and followed you. What do we get out of it? Jesus replied, yes, you have followed me. In the recreation of the world, when the Son of Man will rule gloriously, you who have followed me will also rule, starting with the 12 tribes of Israel. And not only you, but anyone who sacrifices home, family, fields, whatever, because of me, will get it all back a hundred times over, not to mention the considerable bonus of eternal life. This is the great reversal, many of the first ending up last, and the last first. So for those of you who are just tuning in, I just read Matthew chapter 19, 27 through 30. I read it in the New King James Version as well as the Message Version. And pretty much what these couple of, of verses are saying is Peter posed the question to Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, you know, we've given up so many things for you. What can we expect in return? What is it that we're going to have, you know, seeing that we've given up everything for you? And Jesus replies in verse 29, and says to Peter and the rest of the disciples, Every one of you that has left houses, brothers, sisters, father, mother, whatever you have given up for my name's sake, you shall receive it a hundredfold, and you shall inherit eternal life. As I was thinking about that scripture, God reminded me of, uh, you know, thinking about sacrifices, because Peter was pretty much saying, you know, we've given up a lot for you, Jesus. And as I started thinking about the sacrifices and the things that we've given up for God, it reminded me of the story of Abraham and Isaac. And in Genesis chapter 22, just the first verse, the Bible says, Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. And it goes on to say that God told Abraham to take Isaac, his only son, Take him up to the mountain and sacrifice him to God. 
And you know, the story goes on that Abraham took Isaac up and tied him, tied him to the to the altar. And as he was about to kill him, God told him, don't. You know, God stopped him from doing it. And of course, it was a test of Abraham's faith and Abraham's level of sacrifice. You know, what he was willing to give up for God. And it got me thinking, you know, about the times that we as believers of, in, in Jesus Christ, have God has asked us to sacrifice things for him. And we have taken that thing. Whatever it is, whether it's a relationship, it's a job opportunity, it's it's a friendship, it's, you know, houses, lands, possessions, whatever it is. We have taken those things up to the mountain like Abraham did. But many times we have not been allowed to return back down the mountain with those things like Abraham was. So Abraham, well, Abraham was able to return with Isaac because God told him it's okay. I just wanted to test you. But for many of us, God has allowed us to go through with the complete sacrifice where we have not been allowed the quote unquote privilege of coming back down the mountain with that thing that God asked us to sacrifice. And so sometimes we feel like Peter in Matthew chapter 19. We feel like we've given up so much for God, but we haven't received anything tangible in return, right? Sometimes it may even feel like you're on the verge of being blessed in the way that you hope you'd be blessed in the thing that you've been believing God for, but it seems like you're stuck in neutral. Like things are just not moving for you in the way that they're moving for other people. And you know, it, it feels like you're living in the land of almost. That's how I'll describe it tonight. And almost is a very frustrating place to live. When you almost have that thing that you want, when you almost feel like God has answered the prayer or given you the blessing that you're trusting him for, when you've considered all the things that you've given up for him. But the reality is tonight that we don't always receive from God the exact thing that we give up. But there's always, as Matthew chapter 19 tells us, a hundredfold blessing for everything that we've given up in Christ. So even though you may feel tonight that you have given up so much and you don't see how God has re quote unquote repaid you for some of the things that you've sacrificed for him, we don't always receive the exact thing that we give up. So you may have given up a relationship and you're believing God to replace that relationship, but he may have replaced it with something else. God may not necessarily give you back the exact thing you give up, but what he does promise in Matthew 19 verse 29 is a hundredfold blessing for everything that we've given up to him. There are blessings that we receive from God that cannot be measured like freedom, like peace of mind, like a sense of security. Those things cannot be measured. You can't, you can't tangibly touch those things. And even when we think about all the things that we give up for God, kind of like Peter the reality is everything, if you give up everything that you have right now for God, it still cannot compare to what God gave up for you, right? And so the Holy Spirit challenged me tonight, even as I thought, you know, when I read that verse, you know, with Peter saying, we've given up everything for you, God, what else is left? And just thinking about my own life and things that I feel I've given up for God, that I'm still waiting for him to give back to me in a sense. Um, that I feel like I haven't yet received. And God challenged me. You know, because at, at some point in your walk with God, people of God, when you become spiritually mature, at some point in your walk with God, it has to be about more than just what you hope to get. It has to be about more than just what you hope to get. It can't just be, well, God, I gave this up for you. Now, what are you going to do for me? Or God, look at all the things I've sacrificed and look at all the things I'm not partaking in and I'm not engaging in for your name's sake. How are you going to bless me in, re in return? When you get to a point in your spiritual walk, when you get to a point of maturity, it has to be more. It has to be about more than just what you hope to get from God. We have to get to the place where we serve God because of who he is, not what it is that we hope he will do for us because the reality is he has already done everything that he needs to do 
for us in sacrificing his only son, in giving up the thing that meant the most to him for you and for me. He has already done enough. And the problem with us as believers, when we go to God with this kind of mentality of, well, I've done for you, Lord, so what are you going to do for me? What God said to me is many times we seek his hand. We've become so so perfect in seeking, we've become perfectionists in seeking God's hand, or proficient rather, in seeking God's hand, but not his face. And what God said to me is when you seek my hand, that is sponsorship. When you seek my face, that is relationship. So what is it that you're looking for from me? Are you looking for sponsorship or are you looking for relationship? Are you only serving me for what you hope to get in return? Or are you serving me because of who I am to you? Because of how you feel about me? Because of the relationship that you want to form and to have with me? Are you seeking God's hand tonight and not his face? Is it more about sponsorship than it is about relationship? I was listening to this song by the Walls Group called Satisfied. And the words say, if I never get that house, that car, or be a superstar, and my dreams never come true, will I be satisfied with you? And if no one ever knows my name and my gifts don't bring me fame, if everything I have someday I lose, will I be satisfied with you? That is relationship. That is you saying to God, if I never get one more blessing, if you never open another door for me, if you never do anything else for me, God, I will be satisfied with you, just you. The old song says you can have the whole world, but give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. So even as we are in our humanity sometimes, we want to fly in God's face and ask him for the things that we expect. And it's not, and God is so merciful. He doesn't say, oh, you can't ask me for anything. He still says, come and ask. But we have to be mindful of where our hearts are tonight. Are we more concerned with seeking God's hand than we are his face? Peter said to God in Matthew 19, he said to Jesus, we've left everything and followed you. So what, what, what shall we have? We've given up everything. Now what? What's left? And even though God is looking at us and God is saying, I've given up everything for you. And I want you to want me more than you want the stuff. Even though God is saying that in his mercy, he still has made provisions for us. So he told us in Matthew 19, 29, that everything you give up for him, he's going to give it back to you a hundredfold in addition to eternal life. In 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 through 10, the Bible says, As it is written, eyes has not, have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have it entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. We don't yet even see, we can't conceptualize what God has in store for us. But verse 10 of 1 Corinthians 2 says, But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. So those things that you sense in your spirit, those things that God has laid on your heart that he's going to do for you, that is him hinting, indicating to you what it is that he plans to do. And it may not always be tangible things, people of God. Everything you give up for God, you may not get back that exact same thing. But you have relationship with him. And there are other things that he is pouring into you and giving you. Right? Matthew 19, 29. I just want to leave that verse in your spirit tonight. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold. And inherit eternal life. So if you're on the call tonight and you're feeling a bit frustrated, you feel like you're living in the land of almost, almost happy, almost free, almost blessed, 
I almost got what it is that God says he, he has for me. It's all, I'm almost there. I'm stuck in neutral, but I don't feel like I'm moving forward. And you feel like you've sacrificed so much for God and you've given up so much for him, but you don't feel like you're seeing God repay you in the very areas that you have sacrificed for him. God's word for you tonight is that he is going to repay everything that you've given up for him. He is going to repay you a hundredfold in addition to the fact that you will inherit eternal life. But even though that's what God is saying to us tonight, I want to challenge us to instead of seeking God's hand, to instead of looking for the things that God will give us back for what we've done for him, let us, let us aim to seek his face. Let us aim to seek his heart, not seeking sponsorship from God but seeking relationship from him because the reality is he has already done everything that he needs to do. If he never does one more thing for you, be honest with yourself tonight. Would you be satisfied with just him alone? If that prayer that you desperately want him to answer, if he doesn't do it, if he doesn't do one more thing for you with everything that he has already done, with the sacrifice of his own life for you on the cross of Calvary, will you be satisfied with just him alone? Will you be satisfied with Jesus tonight? So be encouraged. And let's go to God tonight in prayer. Lord, tonight we just want to thank you, first of all, for this word. We want to thank you, God, for how you challenge us in your word but then you turn right around and you encourage us and you build us up in the process, God. We thank you. We thank you, oh God, for this word that reminds us, God, that you do plan to, to, to give back to us everything that we have given up for you a hundredfold. That you do plan, God, to repay us, even though you don't have to. Even though you've done enough. You do plan to repay us, God, a hundredfold in addition to giving us eternal life. God, we are so grateful. We ask you tonight, God, to forgive us for the times that we have sought your hand and what you could do for us instead of seeking your face, instead of seeking your heart, for the times that we have sought sponsorship from you instead of seeking relationship with you. We ask you to forgive us. We ask you to forgive us, God, for the times where we, like Peter, are tallying and counting up all the things we've given up for you and, and feeling like, well, we haven't gotten these things back in return. Forgive us, God. We're so grateful tonight that you remember our frame, the Bible says, and you know that we are but dust. You know that we are human. And that's how we give as human beings. Whatever we give, we're looking to receive in return. That's our human nature. That's our sinful nature. And sometimes we extend that to you. Well, God, I did this for you. So I deserve this in return. Or God, I sacrificed this for you. How come you haven't blessed me in the way you're blessing so-and-so? Forgive us, God. Help us tonight to truly be satisfied with you. To be content with our relationship with you. That if you never do anything else for us, that we know that we have you. And that if we have you, that is all that we need in this life. Have mercy on us, God. Those of us that have that mentality of I've given up everything, now what? Where's mine? What are you going to do for me, God? Forgive us for that mentality. Because that is how we treat each other. If we do something for each for, for the other person, we expect them to do it back for us in return. And we extend that to you. Forgive us tonight, God. Search our hearts. Search our hearts, God. Search our minds. Search our lives, God. If there are things that we are holding on to, that you are asking us to give up for you, that you are asking us to sacrifice and to surrender for you, God, let us give it up for you. You did not... Spare your own son, God, but you gave him up for us. The Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only. It wasn't like you had 10 sons and you gave one. You gave your only begotten son that whosoever believes in you would not perish but have everlasting life. God, help us to not think of anything that we have in our lives too great to sacrifice for you. God, we love you tonight. 
And it's our desire to become better disciples of you, Jesus Christ. It's our, it's our desire, God, to become, to live a surrendered life 365 days of the year. Help us, God, to honor you in everything that we do, to sacrifice for you, and to seek your face and your heart, not your hand. God, we give you all the glory tonight. We thank you for another Midnight Cry prayer call. Strengthen the hearts of your people on this call tonight. And resolve for somebody that conflict, that struggle that they may be having with what they've given up for you versus what they feel you've given them in return. Resolve that issue, God, like only you can in your loving kindness. We give you all the glory tonight, God, all the honor and all the praise for you deserve it. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you guys for tuning in to the Midnight Cry Prayer Call. Thank you for bearing with me and my voice. Thank you for those who prayed for me. I made it through the call. Praise God. To God be the glory. If, if, if you never get another blessing from God, will you be satisfied with him? Will you be satisfied with him? I love you guys. I'm praying for you. Please keep me in prayer. We'll be back on the call again on Tuesday at midnight Eastern Standard Time. 11 p.m. Central Standard Time. God bless you.